And next, we'd like to bring to the stage um, from New York, Vega MX. Good afternoon. I'm excited to share with you today Vega MX's real-time intel and physics-assisted AI for wildfires. We are Team Fusion and Fire with NASA's iTech program, and my name is Rachel Brady. I spent 13 years with the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, first as a dispatcher and then as a research data specialist. I'd like to begin today by discussing with you the impacts of wildfires just in case anyone in this room is unaware of the problems we've been having in the Western United States and truly around the world. From Australia to Canada, from California to Texas, from the Siberian forests of Russia to the rainforests of Brazil, wildfires are becoming more and more prominent on our landscape. And these are not isolated events that occur in a certain location, but have overarching impacts both environmentally and economically on all of us. We are currently caught in a vicious cycle where catastrophic wildfires are leading to increased emissions. These increased emissions are then leading to the heating of our atmosphere, which is contributing to longer, more prolific droughts. <laughs> this all in turn circles back around to the top where larger, more catastrophic wildfires occur. We currently see this playing out in the landscape of California, where 16 of the top 20 largest wildfires in California state history have occurred since 2000. Eight of those 16 have occurred just since last year. We are destroying entire watersheds and are unsure of the long-term environmental impacts that this will have. In 2020, a George Mason University study concluded that conservatively, annual realized and unrealized costs from wildfires totaled $185 billion. The problem is that land managers and the fire service are not keeping pace and scale to quickly respond to fire, wildfires. And when they do embrace these technologies, they are often cumbersome, delivered too late to take action, or the models are not mature. The quickest way to improve time and speed in the fire theater is before the fire even begins. This process is currently very cumbersome and begins when a firefighter collects fuel samples to verify and update current fuel moisture readings. This is done about once every 30 days. This is supplemented by approximately 2,000 fire weather stations that report every hour on the current fire weather conditions. This all feeds in to what is called a dispatch level. Dispatch levels determine how many resources will be sent once that fire is reported. And this is updated every four to six hours by dispatchers. Once a fire does start, dispatchers rely on 911 callers to provide them with an accurate location of that fire. I'm gonna let you in on a secret though. 911 callers rarely know where they are calling from and they rarely give an accurate location. We are losing the battle with time and speed in the fire theater. Once that fire does start, the weight of the world falls upon the incident commander, who must make life and death decisions using their instincts, training, and experience. These decisions are typically made on the hood of a truck or the back of a tailgate. One of the biggest problems, though, on all fires, big or small, is timely, accurate data. On the large briefing map pictured here, this data is routinely 12 to 36 hours old. If the incident is lucky enough to get an IR flight, it may only be four to six hours old, but no matter what, that data is always old. And this old data is also what's feeding our fire models. And our fire models are only accurate two out of every three times when they are provided accurate data. This is unacceptable when people's lives, property, and the environment are at stake. Once the fire is extinguished, Assessment teams are called in to assess the post-fire risks that remain on the landscape. These risks include sedimentation, flooding, and in worst case scenarios like pictured here in Montecito following the Thomas Fire in 2018, debris flows. These teams are missing high resolution topographic data to quickly assess post-fire and storm effects. They are also missing spectral data to quickly analyze 
the vegetation immediately following the fire. Now that the space age is upon us, though, we believe the fire theater should be seen in real time. We believe that pre-fire predictions should be available months ahead of time. With weekly updates and the day that fire does occur, we want to see weather updates every 15 minutes or less, not every hour. We see pre-fire, we, <laughs> we see dispatching an assignment of resources being done with real-time data. We see people, fires being fought, knowing exactly where they are and where they are going. We see post-fire analysis being done quickly and efficiently with the data that they need. How do we plan to do this? We are Vega MX. We have assembled an amazing team of former fire practitioners as well as data experts. We have the hydrology and remote sensing experts. We have UAV and satellite experts. We have the leaders in climatology and weather. And, and most important, we have people who understand the fire service and want to optimize it. We are not a research company. We are an implementation company. We plan to have this fully operational within the next year, as we already have a fully operational platform with the US Navy. We have an extensive network of hardware with a sensor fusion platform already in space. We have internal IP for big data management, sensor fusion, radar, and sensor design. We want to take these capabilities and expand, repurpose, and retool our military-grade satellites to solve the time and speed issue within the fire theater. Not only do we have the personnel, but we have the partnerships to actualize as well. The first partnership that I would like to highlight is our partnership with SpaceEyes. SpaceEyes will allow us to develop low latency, multi-sensor data fusion. They already have this operational with the US Department of Defense and have recently successfully participated in multiple NATO exercises. Our partnership with Orbital Micro will allow us to fuse real-time weather data quickly and efficiently without having to source it. Orbital Micro has a fleet of CUBE satellites known as GEMS. GEMS provides 3D passive microwave observations for every point on the Earth every 15 minutes. As an early customer with Earth Daily, we will be provided access to a super spectral satellite constellation by 2023. This will not only supplement us with additional data, but also provide us to, with access to thermal IR bands. Together, we also have multiple partnerships with academic community, as well as a relationship with CRCES, the Center for Research on the Ever-Changing Earth Systems. Together, our partnerships and our personnel will help bring the fire theater into the space age. In the pre-fire theater, we plan to fuse synthetic aperture radar, SAR, and multispectral imagery to measure biomass, soil moisture, and fuel moisture. This is exciting because even a year ago, SAR data was not commercially viable. But now we have the ability to use and fuse this data to quickly create a, a picture of the entire landscape, not just 2,000 isolated points throughout the United States. Through a constellation of commercial satellites and existing NASA and NOAA satellites, we will be able to quickly and efficiently detect wildfires, as well as provide an accurate location so we can stop relying on those 911 callers. This will solve most if not all, of the pre-fire theater shortfalls that currently exist. Once that fire does start, we will use a constellation of commercial satellites and high-altitude UAVs to support our firefighters in seeing what, they, what is on the ground going on. This will be provided through updated fire progression products every 15 to 30 minutes. Through continuous weather updates and forecasting, we will provide firefighters with the ability to make informed decisions about their fire tactics. Unlike the current fire modeling, we plan to introduce physics-based AI into the models, which our partnership at the Los Alamos National Laboratory is already working on. Physics-based modeling 
in an operational setting is considered the holy grail for moving fire, modeling forward, and improving accuracy. This will all be serviced through a decision support platform so that the incident commander, air, and ground resources will all have the same common real-time operating picture. Once the fire is extinguished and only the destruction remains, we will help the post-fire assessment teams quickly analyze the risk that remains on the landscape with the most accurate current data through SAR, optical, and multispectral data sets. This is vital because most of our catastrophic wildfires are only extinguished through season-ending weather events. This will all be achieved through a constellation of commercial and government satellites, as well as high-altitude UAVs. The data will be fused into existing models and decision support platforms. These platforms are already readily available in the United States, so instead of trying to make our own, we would rather just partner with those companies at the leading edge, providing them with accurate, timely data while we continue to build out the physics-based AI into the models that everybody can use to improve the accuracy. We've already began building this out with internal funds, but we are seeking $10 million in a staged approach to fully build this out. We have an S-band on a SAR satellite in orbit already, and we are working on acquiring the additional data from our partnerships to fully build this out. We plan to spend a fire season fine tuning this so that we can ensure accuracy and scalability. In the second phase, we plan to do a feasibility study on a sensor platform to ensure that we have achieved our sub 10 minute or less on most of our products through the appropriate satellite and UAVs. This will solve most, if not all, of the pre-fire theater, or the fire theater, time and speed issues, as well as build resiliency in the fire, in the fire service. Our initial, our initial target for sales is both federal, land, and state managers, as well as insurance companies and utility companies, along with banking institutions. We'd like to take just a final minute here to thank the NASA iTech program for hosting this amazing event and allowing us to participate. We have, if you would like any more information about our products or our sensors, please contact Vega MX or join us at the round table tomorrow. We ha we'll have our, our experts, both our scientists and engineers, and we have our CEO with our company here today to help answer any additional questions that you have as I am simply <laughs> the former dispatcher who's excited to solve the time and speed issues within the fire theater and ensure that fewer people lose their homes to these catastrophic wildfires. Thank you.